in order to get these tiles destroyed whenever they touch some whenever they reach this kind of uh, screen here we are going to create some destroyer here or some action here for that i'm going to create a create empty and i'm going to name it as the destroyer or i'm going to name it as a border and add that border what i'm going to do is that i'm going to simply drag and drop that border over here and i'm going to add a box collider 2d to it now you can see that we got that box collider here but that too small so i'm going to change the offset to something like 20 here sorry not the offset i'm going to change it manually so i'm going to change it something here as well now you can see that we got a big border collider here and what i'm going to do is that whenever anything touches this border here that thing should get destroyed so i'm going to create some sort of border or i'm going to create a destroyer check destroyer checker script and wait for it to be created now i'm going to open that in the unit in the wheel studio as well and what i'm going to do is that i'm going to write uh, some sort of collision control here so I'm going to say that void on collision enter 2d for that 2d what I'm going to do is that in this uh, void collision 2d what I'm going to do that is whenever any game object touches this collider here that game object should be destroyed so in this I'm going to uh, create a collision 2d call and I'm going to say that call dot sorry destroy anything that touches this so that would be cold dot game object so now let's see what happens and uh, I think I should zoom out a little bit so let's see what happens when we click on play here and they pass this just right I think we haven't added some sort of collider to the here yeah, we have added such some sort of collider to this uh, piano tile here so i'm going to create some sort of box collider 2d here and now let's see what happens now you can see that whenever these three tiles hit this uh, destroyer here they get destroyed so before destroying we should find out what we are destroying so for that in order to get that i'm going to say that debug dot log and in this I'm going to say that tag so that this should print which tag we are hitting or we are destroying so for that I'm going to set my piano to some sort of tag here for that I'm going to create a tag here and in the tag I'm going to create a piano and the spelling here is so wrong I'm going to save it and go back to the piano here and set it to piano as well so let's see what happens and we are not getting anything from it so let's just change it to cold dot game object and i think this should print out the game object name because cold dot collider work with the thing that are colliding and in that case we are destroying that thing i don't know why the debug lock is not working what about let's see we're going to check it why it is not working because this thing should work debug.log isn't working I don't know why is that but some there is some issue with it yeah debug.log isn't working so I'm going to leave it because I don't want it in the, to be to give me a headache so I think we are doing something very good here so now what we need to do is that now whenever the tiles are destroyed we need to check that if there are some sort of empty space here and if there is then we should create another tile over here so for that what I'm going to do is that I'm going into this spawner action script here and I'm going to create some sort of bool uh, function here and I'm going to say that bool check for empty and this is going to check that whether that certain location is empty or not so in the bool check for empty what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say that uh, uh, copy and paste this whole thing here 
and instead of writing this thing I'm going to create a if condition here and I'm going to say that uh, child dot count child count is greater than zero then this should pass at some sort of false because uh, if there is some child in it there we shouldn't be initiating any element game object and when there is no child we should return true so what this function is doing is that they are checking for the child's uh, in these positions so if there are no child in the positions then we are going to generate the tiles again so I'm going to call that script in the update function and I'm going to say that if check for empty and so basically some of people think that why I put it to null here is because at the default this is equal to true so what I'm saying is that check for empty is equal to equal to true it's and I'm uh, why I'm writing it in this form is because it is also like if I write it to like this form this should work the same way and this is also a, also the a same thing so in this what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that spawner function and let's see what happens Now you can see that three tiles are generated. Now you can see that whenever these tiles are destroyed and the three tiles are generated. And now we have got some sort of action to the game here. And yeah, they are working just like uh, that piano tiles that we need. And the other thing is that uh, we can create some sort of emotion. Uh, some, uh, we can create one, three more here so that six tiles should be coming down in a single direction. Like we can simply uh, to duplicate these and drag and put it over here so that we have some sort of six tiles coming in the same way you can see that now they look like we are uh, now they look like that there are some sort of action to the game or what we can do is that we can simply uh, duplicate them too and then do this so that our tiles upon tiles will be coming down now the other thing that we need to do is that we need to generate these tiles one by one. So I'm going to just uh, delete these positions here because we don't want a lot of positions so far what we got is good. So I'm going to delete them and now I'm going to create some sort of logic so that one by one these uh, piano tiles should be generated.